Before I get started on this, I might as well mention one thing. Yes, I'm going to do Ben Drowned eventually. Every time I bring up creepypastas, Ben Drowned is always brought up. It's been one of my most requested creepypastas, in fact, since the very beginning of Traumathon. But I won't lie to you, it's really intimidating because that thing is just massive. And how much there is to cover is immense. I initially thought this year was going to be the year I talked about Ben Drown, but sadly, due to technical errors that happened earlier in the month, I'm afraid I'm going to have to delay it for some other time. Sorry, but I really want to get this right. For now, let me tell you about one of my favorite creepypastas ever, my personal favorite. Not only because it scared me for the longest time, but because it introduced me into the world of creepypastas in general, for me as a whole. Suicide Mouse. I know it's nothing too spectacular, and hell, I'd be the first to admit that it's not very good, but Suicide Mouse introduced me to concepts and spooks that I never really thought about, and never really thought would affect me very much. First and foremost, what is Suicide Mouse? Well, it's a creepypasta story created back in 2009, and it's about an employee of Disney who stumbled upon an old archived Mickey Mouse cartoon that was so terrible that the employee stumbled out of the viewing spoke the words, real suffering is not known, seven times, and then proceeded to kill himself. That cartoon in question was a pretty rough and really weird three-minute loop of Mickey Mouse walking across a town. It was discovered by Leonard Maltin, who apparently was reviewing the film for consideration for a Mickey Mouse collection on DVD. Now, as described by the story itself, the video doesn't get much more interesting until after the three-minute mark, where the screen goes black and the video comes back after three more minutes, and this is when we begin to hear moaning and groaning in the background and unsettling sounds for sure, and then the animation itself begins to warp and unfurl. Things became strange and weirder when a blood-curdling scream can be heard, and man, that scream. That scream really made me shit my pants when I was a kid. I don't know what it is, but I hated that part of the video. I guess it's because I never really heard anyone scream like that before in my life, and it sounded so real. Now as an adult, I've heard that scream used a ton in other horror movies and creepypastas that I know. It's just a stock scream, really. But dude, I really did not know at the time. I added at the fact that I was a very naive child, and I had no idea what creepypastas were. Honestly, it was just a huge recipe for just trauma. The video ends with a close-up of Mickey Mouse's face, and strange songs can be heard in the background. Russian text appears because the Russian language is fucking cursed, and then we see this guy stumble into the picture. Which we might assume might be that guy who took his own life after watching the cartoon. Honestly, this whole thing feels like a bad nightmare, and I know people use that a lot to describe freaky shit, but I'm serious. I felt so unsafe watching this video back when I was a kid. It almost felt like someone was watching me, and this was back when I used to live in a two-floor apartment. My mom and dad would always be watching stuff downstairs, and I'd watch creepy stuff upstairs by myself. The whole floor is just my own. That feeling was still there though, like I was watching something forbidden and that some dark ominous force was hovering over me, staring at me. Ugh, it was spooky. I even convinced my friends to watch it with me over Windows Live Messenger, remember that? And I acted tough by thinking it was stupid and telling them that it was just some dumb shit, all of them being really scared. I honestly regretted that moment, because honestly as an adult, I truly cherish being scared alongside other people because that feeling is exhilarating to me now, so sharing that feeling with others is honestly just very blissful, if that makes any sense. Now as freaky as that story is, as wonderful as it may be that it was my gateway into creepypastas, there's something darker about this video that I guess I'm only just realizing now, and that's the strange romanticization of suicide in, well, pretty much every creepypasta and horror story at the time. Suicide was one of the most popular topics alongside murder for a lot of creepypasta stories. It's really weird, but a lot darker when you realize that a lot of creepypastas were made by teenagers, and the idea that so many of us are fascinated and morbidly curious about the idea of suicide is pretty unsettling. This video, no joke, instilled the fear inside of me, the idea of death and suicide in general. I've never once been suicidal, but I've had friends that were damn near pushed over the edge. It's crazy to even say that, because, well, we were teenagers. 
Thinking about taking your own life is tragic in itself, but doing so at such a young age, I mean, that's beyond tragic. What's even more tragic is knowing that some of my most successful friends nowadays were the same kids back then that thought about this sort of stuff. That's not to say that they're not depressed now, but they've gotten a lot better at managing themselves and their emotions in general. And what if they didn't? Honestly, sorry, I, I never really intended this to be so personal, but I'm honestly just typing this from the top of my head, so this is just raw feelings being dumped right now. But really, I, I guess this video just pulls me back to a time where all I'd ever see on the news is some kid getting bullied into their suicide for one reason or another. I guess I never really noticed it until, well, now, recollecting all these memories. It really was everywhere for a time. I don't watch the news anymore, so I'm not sure if that's still the case, but I guess my point is that real life's true horror sometimes is worse than what we read. It's what inspires our films and creepypastas, and for an introduction into the world of creepy content, Suicide Mouse wasn't half bad. It's silly to look back on it now, and it's so laughably fake that it's hard to imagine anyone would even think that this was real, but I guess it didn't really care. Because in the end, sometimes all you need is just a few terrifying sounds and a bit of a convincing video and inject some reality into it and bam, you got yourself a classic.